This presentation is an introduction to the crash course, which is a much longer body of material. My purpose today, though, is to give you the highlights from that, because the crash course is a, is a lens through which I look at the world. It's my way of making sense of a lot of seemingly disparate, troubling events. And what I want to do is I want to share with you how I do that, what the framework is, how I look at these things, because I think that you too, when you see the world in this way, you'll be able to make sense of it, and you'll be able to predict what's coming next. So what are some of these incidents that have been going on? Well, uh, you know, prior to April of 2000, none of us had probably heard of the Deepwater Horizon. You, like me, probably had never thought of this particular drilling rig. But on April 21st, 2010, this thing was in everybody's consciousness. And it is the source of the largest environmental disaster ever in the United States history. So how did this happen? Well, we might be tempted to think this was just what happens when human error and a complex project come together in an unfortunate set of circumstances. And, and that's partly true. But it's also connected to the global financial meltdown and the riots that we've been seeing in Greece and the unrest we've been seeing in Spain and the unrest that we may be seeing in other countries as it goes forward. So how is it that, that the financial system and the deep water incident, how are those connected? And you may have also noticed that the stock market, which hit a peak in 2007 and then took a dizzying plunge into March of 2009 before recovering for a little while and then going through some more volatility. You might have noticed all of this as well and been wondering, well, what does this have to do with the Greece situation I've just been talking about, if anything? Well, how about the Deepwater incident? How are these and dozens of other incidents, how are these connected? Well, they are connected. I want to show you how. This story for me begins with the economy, the first E. The economy is the way in which we organize ourselves. And without a functioning economy, all of our hopes and dreams really will not come to pass. We need a functioning economy to preserve our standard of living, our quality of life, for us to have opportunities. We want to have a well-functioning economy. So I look at the economy through that lens because it's very important that we have one and that it's functioning well. But there's another reason I look at the economy as the prime lens through which I look, and that's because we get very rapid, very quick, instant feedback on the world around us from the economy. Through the financial markets, through behaviors and interrelationships of prices, we get a lot of really good information. But, of course, the economy, that is the lens I look through, but it's not the most important part of this story. Without energy, the economy actually has no meaning. We could have all the money in the world, but without energy, we would really have nothing. We would not be able to build an economy. And there's a very interesting story coming up around energy, and particularly around petroleum, around oil, around the fact that oil may well, within the next few years, be peaking in terms of its total output. This doesn't mean running out, but there's a really interesting story about how our economy is put together and how it relies on energy. And when we put those two pieces, we get a very interesting story emerging. But there's a 30 in this story as well, and that's the environment. And for me, the environment in this story is going to be about resources and about how those resources, within my lifetime or maybe my children's, many of these are going to be peaking as well in concert with oil. And so this in itself, listen, there's really nothing here that, that should be too frightening about this story, but there is something that we really need to understand. It's about how this is put together. So when I put all of these E's together into one spot, I can boil the whole crash course down into one statement, and it's that the next 20 years are going to be completely unlike the last 20 years. Now, this might be a little bit trite sounding, right? Um, but what it really means is that the kind of change I see means that modeling what we think is about to happen based on what just happened is going to be really the wrong way to approach this. We've got a really sharp corner coming up. We have to be open to the prospect that there are some real changes coming, possibly disruptive changes. Here's how economists see the world. Don't worry, we're not going to have a lot of math in this. So uh, what I want to do for you here now is, is let me simplify this equation, you know, in case you don't remember your calculus. There. Economists see the world in terms of growth. This is an equation that comes off the Federal Reserve website, and that is the equation for economic growth. Not just any kind of growth, a special kind of growth. It's a kind of growth that sounds benign. Hey, we want our GDP to grow by 3% next year, 4%. But we want it to grow by some percentage every year. 
So this growth is actually a type of growth known as exponential growth. And it has powerful implications for what's about to come next. And it has enormous implications for your lives and for the lives of those around you.